Sam Presti and the Oklahoma City Thunder are taking a new approach to the way to build an NBA basketball team, and I must say, I'm here for it. They're going out and getting as many guys that can do the little things and just contribute to winning as they can. Going out and getting case on Wallace, uh, now Shea Gilders Alexander, putting up 32 a night. That definitely contributes to winning. But guys like Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, and all the other guys on this roster are gritty and they do what it takes, whatever is necessary, to bring home the dub. So that's what we're talking about today, the future of the Oklahoma City Thunder and why I think they could potentially be a playoff team next year. So make sure to stick around until the end of the video. Hit the like button and leave me a comment down below as well as Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, turn on the post notifications if you do enjoy NBA content. About 97% of my audience is not subscribed to the channel, which is kind of wild. I don't know if I just don't ask for subs enough or what, but yeah, make sure to go hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy what you see here. NBA offseason content coming all season long. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Well, I guess I should say all offseason, but let's go ahead and get started. Case and Wallace. Uh, it's as simple as it gets. He is a winning player. He can do anything you need from the point guard position. Um, elite defender, that's where it all starts with him. One of the best uh, perimeter defenders in this draft class, without a doubt. About six foot four, really good wingspan. He also can knock down the three ball. Now, he's not going to be hitting many of those in the NBA, but good out of the catch and shoot, and he can contribute, or he can create for himself a little bit off the dribble. He has a very nice in-between game. He's also very good in the pick-and-roll. Um, reads the defense very well out of the pick-and-roll, or at least he did at Kentucky. Here he is again in the catch-and-shoot. I like Cason Wallace a lot. Now, he's not going to start. They already have Shea and Josh Giddy at the starting guard positions, but it's actually not as stacked up as you might think when you look at the lineups. Cason Wallace is going to come in and be the day one backup point guard, and with the 10th pick? They traded up to 10. I think that's that's pretty good. Uh, but people forget that both of these guys are basically rookies, especially Chet Holmgren, who has yet to make his NBA debut. Remember, he was the number two overall pick in last year's draft, and the Thunder went from being the second worst team in the league to being a play-in team without Chet Holmgren even playing. And he has shown flashes. He dominated the summer league. He dominated whatever showcases he was playing in until he got hurt. Uh, but I feel like Chet is about to have an elite rookie season. I mean, technically, he could even win Rookie of the Year, right? Because he hasn't played a single second of NBA basketball. And then Usman Jiang, I believe I'm finally pronouncing his name right, appeared in 39 games this year, only about 13 minutes played per game. But still, he's a guy that, you know, at six foot 11, he's dealt with injuries, but he's a guy that possesses a whole lot of potential a guy that flew up draft boards last year, and the Thunder have plenty of time to wait around for him to develop. Now, the superstar duo in Oklahoma City now is Josh Giddy and Shea Gilders Alexander. Giddy averaged 16.5 points per game last year to go along with 7.9 rebounds per game. Those are pretty good numbers, in case you were wondering, uh, especially for a guy that has absolutely no bag whatsoever. He just dribbles around and shoots. Uh, and again, he's going to be 21 years old next year. You see the efficiency right there. Uh, also averages, you know, some de or here's the efficiency. He also averages a couple steals a game, almost 48% uh, from the field and 33% from three. Very good numbers from Josh Giddy this year. Uh, now Shea Gilgis Alexander, man, 31.4 points per game and 5.5 rebounds. If that doesn't scream superstar at you, I'm not sure what will. A guy that can go out and put 32 on your head anytime he feels like it. 51% from the field, 35% from three. This cat is something special in Oklahoma City. 51% from the field, 32 points a game as like a 24-year-old. Also does it on the defensive end, 1.6 steals per game, 4.8 rebounds. He's pretty good. Now, the difference makers for this OKC Thunder team, also winning players, uh, it's, it's Lou Dort and it's Jalen Williams. Lou Dort averaged 13.7 points and 4.6 rebounds, but his impact is on the defensive side of the ball. Elite point of attack defender, very good perimeter defender, even though that kind of means the same thing. Offensively, not very good, as you see by the numbers here. We would love to see that three-point percentage and field goal percentage rise drastically next year, but you know, if it doesn't, at least he's still a really, really good defender. 2.1 assist, 1 steal in 31 minutes per game. I expect him to be the starting small forward this year for the Thunder. Now, Jalen Williams is another guy here who they brought him in last year, and in his rookie year, he put up 14.1 points per game and 4.5 rebounds, and that's pretty good numbers 
for a rookie, especially coming out of the West Coast Conference with Chet Holmgren. Uh, they had two, 11 and 12, and they hit on at least two of those picks, it's looking like. 52% from the field, 36% from three. We'll see how Jiang develops, but Jalen Williams, for sure, a home run pick at the back end of the lottery right there. 1.4 steals as well, and he will be 22 years old going into next season. So much youth in Oklahoma City. Uh, and then the secret weapons for the Thunder, Isaiah Joe and Alexei Poku, Pokusevsky. I butchered that. We'll call him Poku. Uh, Isaiah Joe averaged 9.5 points per game and 2.4 rebounds last year in what was a very nice season for him. Kind of a breakout year um, after getting cut by the 76ers. 44% from the field and 41% from three on six attempts per game. He is certified as the team sniper. Um, he's the guy that... You know, you're looking for him at all times when he is on the court this year. Hit some big threes for the Thunder down the stretch. And then the unicorn himself, Poku. Um, a guy that only averaged 8.1 points and 4.7 rebounds. He didn't play that much, and I expect for him to have a much better year next year than he did this year. Um, putting up 44% from the field, 37% from three. Those are good numbers, but again, he was not. He didn't play that much, to be honest. I'm not sure what's going on there. He dealt with injuries. He only played 21 minutes a game. And again, another guy. He will be 22 years old going into next year. Kind of crazy. Now let's take a look at the projected lineup. Again, this is my projected lineup. We have that all-star potential backcourt right there, which is that's, that's beautiful to look at. Shea Gilders Alexander and Josh Giddy at the one and the two. I mean, they're interchangeable. Josh can play the one or the two. Shea can play the one or the two. We'll see how it pans out. Like I said, I like Lou Dort in there at the starting small forward. Um, I think he is a guy that, if given that opportunity at the three, he can really make it pan out. And then you've got Chet Holmgren at the four, uh, making his NBA debut. I put Brooke Lopez in there at the five because the, <laughs> the Thunder really don't have a center. They got the other Jalen Williams uh, and Mike Muscala, where there are two guys that played center last year. Muscala was sent to... Boston now I believe he's in Washington so I just threw in Brooke Lopez you know to uh, illustrate a free agent center um, you know it probably won't be Brooke Lopez he doesn't really fit in with his timeline but if they do want to go out and get a veteran Brooke Lopez would be I mean I could see that for sure now taking a look at the bench unit Kaysen Wallace is right there their number 10 overall draft pick or 12 I guess technically number 10 because they traded up and then Isaiah Joe at the backup two, a guy that can come in off the bench and can spark it up from three. Got an absolute burner on him. And then you got Jalen Williams, who's going to be the sixth man for this team. The bench is definitely a bit of a question mark when you look at the backup four and the backup five. We'll see how that works out. You could throw in Jeremiah Robinson Earl. The other Jalen Williams, as I said, those are just a couple of other options. So we will see what they do there. But... You know, I'm liking the direction of this Oklahoma City Thunder team. Definitely trending up, and they're definitely a team I can see going in and making the playoffs next year in the Western Conference, which it is a loaded le uh, Western Conference. Uh, but as long as they address the starting center spot, they go out and get a little bit of depth in the front court. Hey, I think this is a team that definitely, definitely makes some noise in the Western Conference, especially with the youth. You know, Shea, if he has anywhere close to the kind of season that he has last year, and then if Giddy can go up a little bit in every st statistical category, this is a team that you can go ahead and pencil in for the playoffs next year. I'm pretty high on them. They got a lot of length, a lot of athleticism, and just the guys that makes the winning plays, which is why this Oklahoma City Thunder team is doing something genius. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like button and leave me a comment down below as well as hitting the subscribe button and turning on post notifications. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.